Hi, this is Deborah Sable Thornbrew, and I'm going to demonstrate how to set up tabs in a Word 2016 document. First, I'm going to place my flashing insertion point over here on the left, just to the left of this word, Central Sierra Insurance, to this line. So, what I'm going to do is show you that I've already placed a tab on my ruler. Notice that there's a little capital L right there, and if I were to press my tab key right now, it will indent this line all the way over to this mark, which is placed at the two and a half inch mark on the ruler. There it is. So I'm going to go ahead and backspace to remove uh, that space and put it back to where it was. And I'm going to remove the tab by clicking and dragging this little capital L off the ruler, down and off. How did I do that? Well, here's what I did. First of all, you have to make sure that your ruler is shown on your screen. If you don't see this ruler going across the top of your page, then what you do is you go to the View tab, and on the View tab right here, there is a ruler choice. So you need to click a check mark into the ruler checkbox. Then your ruler will appear. So, okay, I'm going to go back to my home ribbon and make sure my flashing insertion point is right here. That's where I want my tabs to happen. There is a button over here on the far left side. It has a capital L on it and it's if you hover your pointer right on that it will show you that it is a left tab. If I click on that button once it will change to a different kind of tab. There are multiple different kinds of tabs that you can insert. This one looks like an upside down T is called the center tab. So if I use that tab, anything I type will be centered on the line. If I click it again, it'll be a backwards L, which means a right tab. If I click it again, it'll be a cap an under uh, upside down T with a dot, which indicates that you're about to set up a decimal tab, which is really cool because that way any decimal numbers that you're typing in a list will automatically be aligned perfectly under the decimal point. So I'm going to click, there are other tabs you can use here, but I'm going to go ahead and go back to the original. This is the default setting, left tab. So let's say that I want to put a left tab in front of the word central here, well actually that whole line. Uh, and I want to place it at, oh, I don't know, one and a half inches on the ruler. So I'm going to point to the one and a half inch mark, the bottom of it, click once, and there my left pointing tab, or left tab is set. And if I just press my tab key once, it will insert that line all the way to that exact setting. So I'm going to backspace once more. And I want you to know that you can click and drag on your little tab indicator along the ruler. You can click and drag it to another location if you want. So you can put it anywhere you want just by clicking and dragging it. And then press tab and it'll go to that point. Or you can click and drag to remove it down off the ruler. Now that won't uh, that doesn't mean that this will disappear automatically. It depends on where your flashing insertion point is at the time. So if I click down here to put my insertion point and then click and drag to remove that tab, then the line will revert to the default setting for tabs, which is just a half inch. So I'm going to backspace once more. There's another way to set up tabs, which is even better uh, so that you can do more with it and that is using the tabs dialog box. To open the tabs dialog box you have to stay on the home ribbon, the home tab, and go to the paragraph area, paragraph group here in the middle, and then click here to open up the paragraph settings dialog box. Once you get that open, you have to find the tabs button in the lower left corner of that box. So you've got to look all the way down here at the bottom left and click tabs. Then you can do more with tabs. Check it out. You can do different alignments 
from here and you can also include leaders so that when you pr press your tab key and it indents you'll see maybe a dotted line going along that tab space or a dash or a solid line so that you have different choices you can make here. Now let's say that I want to create two tab stop positions. The first one I want to be at the one inch mark. So I'm going to type here in the tab stop position box I'm going to type one for one inch. However in order to make it stick I have to click this button here to set it. Once you see the one inch appear here in this big window you know it has been set. So just by typing in here doesn't mean that you're setting it up. You have to also click set down here. So I've got that one done. Now I want to do another tab, a separate tab, and by the way both of the tabs are going to be left tabs meaning they will indent from the left margin in. I'm not changing any of that so I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to make the next tab stop position show up at the three inch mark so I'm going to erase that one up here at the top and click and type three but before I click to set that tab I'm going to choose a leader to go with that tab so that when I click when I tab over to this mark to this three inch mark there will be a dotted line that goes along. So now that I've got the left tab chosen it's three inch and I've got a, a dotted line chosen as a leader now I'm going to click set. So I click set and now I'm going to click OK. So as you can see on the ruler I have a left tab indicator at the one inch and another one at the three inch. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click, make sure that my flashing insertion point is right here on the left of this line of text, Central Sierra Insurance. Make sure that the two capital L's are right where they want them to be. And I'm going to press tab once and let's see what happens. Okay, good. It indented the line and brought it up to this one inch mark. Now I'm going to indent one more time. I'm going to hit my tab key once more so that it will indent to the three inch mark but this time there should be a dotted line leader. There it is. The dotted line leader extended from the last tab which didn't have a leader in front of it to the second tab at the three inch mark. And so if you want to do elaborate tabs like that with leaders, you have to go on the home ribbon to the paragraph box, open the paragraph dialog box, and then click the tabs button in the lower left corner to open the tabs box. Now also from this tabs box, I can delete these tab stops. So I can click the one I want to delete. Let's say I want to delete this one inch one and I can clear that one by clicking the clear button and that leaves the last tab that I have not cleared. So now I'm going to click OK. Notice that the first tab has disappeared but the second one is still there. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try hitting my tab, uh, tab key on my keyboard just once since I removed the first tab but I left the second one. Let's see what happens. Well, uh, the leader is still there and it went from the beginning of the line all the way to the three inch mark. So because I removed that first tab, this one clicked in, locked in. So there's lots of versatility in how you can set up your tabs and um, I encourage you to explore different tabs as, and working with them. Uh, they can really save you and make sure that your alignments are correct in a professional document.